Welcome back to Craftsman David. Today we're making these maple and walnut laminated dessert trays. So I'm going to cut up these trays using this one inch diameter dish carving bit. I bought this from Rockler. I actually am doing this project because I want to test it out and see if I can make trays pretty easily. But before we get ahead of ourselves, we need to design this tray. In VCarve Pro, it's pretty simple. Make some circles for the inside and outside, connect them up with lines, trim away the extra lines, then offset them to make partitions, and, and finally, trim up the lines one last time. Right, so I just grab these pockets. I already have the tool paths made, so let me just go in and show you how I did them. I had to add the Rockler bit to my library of bits. Luckily, VCarve had one that was similar, so I could just kind of copy it. I took the dimensions off the Rockler website. This simple photo shows you everything you need to know. Then you have your bit, create tool paths, and then you can preview what it's gonna look like. With that last pocket made, it cuts it out with just a straight end mill. When I'm all done, I can save out my tool paths to G-code which is the file that Xcarve understands. The stock we're going to use to make these chip and dip trays are right here. I have these left over from a different project, so I thought I'd put them to good use. So these blanks are rough and I need to plane down both surfaces, top and bottom. I want to flatten the bottom surface here at the jointer, but I have a problem. I have an 8 inch wide jointer and an 11 inch wide piece. So I have the jointer set for a very light cut. I've done this before where I run it through and then I flip it and I run it through the other way. You will end up with a little bit of a step, but it's a lot better than this surface. Unlike the jointer, this is a 15 inch planer, so I have plenty of capacity to do it all in one pass. Now I'm just looking through my scraps of walnut to see if I can find the right pieces to complete these blanks. And in no time at all, I'm gluing up the walnut. Same story, I'll joint and plane these down. So now I have my slab of maple, my slab of walnut, and I'm going to glue them together to make a thicker slab. Now we'll just let the glue set. Whew. I just about glued that to the table. So I'm using double stick tape to hold my blanks down. Just got to make sure it's clean. And since I'm cutting something round, I can just stick this anywhere. So I used the zero, 00 point as the starting point for this carve, and so I printed out a full scale paper template, and now I've got it and I can use this to lay it out on the best grain of the wood blank. So I like that one right about there. Do the same on this one. With the bit zeroed out, I'm ready to carve my dish, but I am going to run without this skirt. I'm I'm going to carve an inch into this material, so that's quite a ways and I think the skirt will get hung up. Also I need to check that my bit is sticking down far enough. Yeah, it doesn't look like I'm going to hit anything else. This collet is smaller than the bit, so that'll work just fine. As it turned out, x was throwing way too many chips to run without the skirt. I was constantly worrying that the wheels were going to get jammed by chips. So I decided to put the skirt on real loose, just the top edge of the Velcro. Even with the skirt, I had to stop and suck up the dust every so often, maybe twice per tray. It was about at this point that I realized the biggest problem with dish carving. Listen. You hear that chattering? Did -di 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 -di. It's really ruining the surface finish. More on this later. After about 45 minutes, this is what we got. Looks like a dish, but man, sure were a lot of shavings. Well, so far so good. You may notice that I milled away my little mark of where my zero zero is, so I want to change this bit out with the quarter inch end mill, and I want to do that without moving it an X and Y. I can re-zero the Z. Now I can set the Z just by having a wrench and, oh by golly, I, by happen chance I got it perfect. 
I'll set zero right there. Okay, and there's the finished piece. I, you'll notice I only went an inch deep going around the outside. I'll finish that off at the router table with a flush trim bit. Oh, that's a bummer. I'll have to try to glue that back in. I guess I was just pushing too hard. And that's the beautiful thing about wood. Just glue it up and continue your project. I'll let that set and it should be good as new. After the glue dried, I tried again to trim up the trays. This time I'm going a lot slower and I'm taking multiple passes to make the edge flush. This seemed to solve my splitting problem. Well, I got it all sanded up around the outside. That was not really a big deal. Uh, the spot where I had the chip out is going to require some wood filling to get that into shape. Uh, but otherwise the outside is going to be just fine. My main concern on this dish is the inside here. Uh, the bottoms of each of these pockets is not at all flat. They're, they're rough, and there's some burn marks. And it's going to take quite a bit of sanding to get this into shape. So the unevenness in the bottom of this dish is caused from chatter. I'm using a one inch diameter cutter in a pretty light duty machine. The X-Carve is a great CNC machine, but it's not very rigid. You can see that as it's cutting, it chatters as seen here. And that chattering is causing the bouncing up and down and I'm not getting an even finish. Uh, the newer X-Carves, have, they have addressed the rigidity problem, they've made them more rigid. I didn't buy the update kit to, to know how much that's really improved. But I can tell you on this version of the X-Carve, dish carving is not ideal. I'm still going to save this dish, I'll just have to sand it a lot. On the next tray I tried using my hand as a damper and then tightening the belts, but nothing really worked. I still got chatter like this. A few things I want to point out about these two trays. The first one had a lot of burning on the maple. I cut that at 30 inches a minute. I turned it up to 40 inches per minute in the second tray. No more burning on the maple. That faster feed rate solved that. What was a bad idea though is when I adjusted the belt tension mid-cut. Look at this pocket right here. There's a big ledge. Uh, pulling on that belt to tension it moved the axis just a little bit and threw everything off. So that's why this looks a little funky now. But I just gotta sand these up. I'm using an eighth inch roundover bit to smooth the edges inside and out. To help me sand these trays, I'm using this ultra flexible sandpaper. It's made by 3M. Instead of a paper backing, it's some sort of a plastic backing. It's basically as floppy as a rag. The other note I have about sanding, I've decided not to smooth out the bottoms. I pointed out before that the bottoms of these trays are, are rough because of the chatter. Uh, I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to sand it on the edges, get the burn marks off, and the bottom's going to have to stay bumpy because it's just too much work. For some of the bigger ledges, I did end up using the Dremel tool. I also used the sanding mop to get as much as I could. I'm going to finish them with an oil finish, teak oil. You just put it on, let it soak, wipe it off, and let it dry. And look at that, once they're filled with candy, you can't even see the rough bottoms. These trays are going to work after all.